What's going on, Geminites? Gem Mint here with another Omnibus Haul. Actually, the entire haul, except for one book, are all pre-releases that we're going to get a chance to take an early look at. Before we get started, i uh, got to give a big shout-out to Marvel Comics for sending us some advanced copies. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of these hauls, plus the statue unboxings or the new comic book day reviews. With that being said, we're going to go over all the prices, we're going to go over the construction, the build, and what they collect. But remember, you can be buying these titles up to 50% off cover price by visiting our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com. They also have great packaging, super fast shipping, with excellent customer service. They also have a bargain bin where you can get titles up to 90% off. If you mention this channel in the memo at checkout for your first order, your second order will have free shipping in the United States. So let's jump into this. We have a trade paperback with a release date of February 17th. It's Strange Academy, issue number one. Everybody's talking about this run. Scotty Young, Humberto Ramos. This has a $13.99 cover price, and it collects the first six issues of this book. It's some of Humberto Ramos' best artwork to date. So let's flip through and take a look at Strange Academy. All right, guys, here's Strange Academy, first class. It feels like a little bit of a smaller trade paperback. Like if I compare it to um, Savage Avengers... So that's kind of interesting, kind of a little handbook of Strange Academy, which is basically like Harry Potter meets the Marvel Universe, all the magic users and all the children of people like Dormammu and a lot of new characters as well. And that's a big reason why this book uh, is kind of so heavily specced on, I would say, because of all the new characters and the potential for this to be something more than a comic book. So I read the first arc. It feels like it's geared towards a younger audience. I mean, it really wasn't for me, to be honest. But it does have great artwork. I mean, we interviewed Humberto Ramos. And he really wanted to point out that he really is in a position in his career where he's able to take his time with this book. And I think it really shows, man. Scotty Young not drawing and stepping behind the writer's chair there to, uh, to create this story. So, I mean, check out the trade if you guys missed out the single issues. I know that they're super expensive right now. So, this is definitely a good way to get caught up with this run. Looks like you have some variant covers and stuff in the back. Look, just flipping through, it looks promising, right? The next trade paperback we have is Savage Avengers Volume 3. This comes out on March 3rd and has a $17.99 cover price. This collects issues 11 through 16. This is one of the few Marvel titles that I didn't give a shot and I didn't read it. Uh, I know it kind of switched teams a little bit. I think it had Punisher, Venom, Conan at one time. But let's flip through and take a look at what's going on in Savage Avengers. I'm not familiar with what's going on here, but you can see Conan still in the mix. Wolverine still in the mix. This is just one that I didn't pick up. We got Juggernaut there. It looks like that's uh, the same suit that he's wearing in his current ongoing series. So I guess that's bleeding over here. But you know what? When I do my new comic book day reviews, a lot of people tell me, man, you should be reading uh, Savage Avengers. We got Electra here. That's like classic Frank Miller stabbing someone in the back with a sigh, right? He used to always do it where they were wearing a shirt. So you didn't really see the sigh, but you just saw like the poking it, the sigh poking out. Looks like Punisher's still in the mix. It looks pretty cool, man. Dang. I might have the other trades. I got to see if I can get caught up on this. All right, guys, on to the hardcover. And I think this is the very first Masterworks that I'm going to actually get a chance to take a look at. This is Howard the Duck, and it has a release date of February 24th. So these uh, Marvel Masterworks have slip cases, kind of like Omnibus. This has a $75 cover price and it collects Howard the Duck issues 1 through 14 with Giant Size Man Thing number 4 and 5 and Marvel Treasury Edition number 12. So, got a lot of material packed into this. So, it has this kind of like old school omnibus black leather hardcover and similar like silver logos and text on the side. So, it's kind of reminding me of those old Omnis. Uh, the thing on these, the binding is great because they're not as thick as an omnibus. You have this nice black and white ribbon. You have a nice eye that lifts up so you can read these pages without gutter loss. And the uh, pages have white borders, so you don't really lose any artwork in this book. Beautiful sewn binding. Uh, and let's take a look at it together. All right, so the Howard the Duck Marvel Masterworks. I'm thinking if you have the Howard the Duck omnibus, this is probably going to double dip, right? Because issues 1 through 14... What does this collect? Yeah, 1 through 33. And then as far as Giant Size Man thing, yep, collects 4 and 5. And then the Marvel Treasury Edition. Yeah, so basically, if you have this omnibus, you don't really need this. But chances are you don't have this omnibus because I'm pretty sure this is a long out-of-print omni. 
Plus, I know that there are specifically Marvel Masterworks collectors out there. I never got into the hardcovers. They always look so expensive, man. Oh, look. Here's the release date. So, I never got into them. I actually used to have the trade paperbacks for a couple of um, Silver Age Marvel stories back in the day. But I, see, I hear a lot of people say that this is, like, the best way to collect these older issues because the books are smaller, they're thinner, uh, and it collects more, right? You have more of a chronological volume format rather than how the Omnis can be where it jumps from creative teams and things like that. So here's the table of contents. Stuart Moore with a forward. Then you have the first appearance, Adventure into Fear 19. This was a little bit before my time, guys. I was never a Howard the Duck guy. I never saw the Howard the Duck movie. Blasphemous, I know. But um, cool, like, Bronze Age artwork, though. I do love Bronze Age. So definitely appreciate Marvel Comics sending us an advanced copy of this to flip through and to show you guys. And they also have variant covers. I think there's three different covers for this book. This is just the, the regular gray one. Then they have like a gold border one. A couple different uh, variants. So in the back, it looks like you have original art, some original covers and interior pages. Looks like some house ads. So you do get some bonus material in the back of these as well. Variants in the back. All right, so the only omnibus that's already been released out of this haul is this new Teen Titans Omnibus Volume 5. I can't believe they are cranking out so much of this material. Uh, Marv Wolfman, Eduardo Barreto, and Romero Tang Tanghal. So this collects issues 32 through 49, plus annuals 3 and 4, Tales of the Teen Titans 91, Secret Origins 13, Secret Origins Annual 3, and Infinity Inc. 45. This has a $100 cover price. We'll take off the dust jacket here. And this has what you would expect out of a DC Omnibus, this black kind of matte, almost construction paper type hardcover. Uh, flipping through here, it's a little bit tight. Uh, semi gutter loss if you're looking at the middle here because um, the eye doesn't really lift up that much off the hardcover. I mean, it's not the worst that I've ever seen, but it could be a little bit better. Maybe with some wear and tear, it'll uh, loosen up a little bit. Definitely want to stretch that spine. Uh, but let's flip through here. It has amazing artwork. I didn't grow up reading Teen Titans, and flipping through this artwork really makes me want to start doing a read-through. Definitely need to start my new Teen Titans read-through. Uh, guys, let me know. Does this conclude the series? I'm totally oblivious to what, what when this run ends. So we mentioned what it collects. Here's the back. Here's the inside of the dust jacket. It didn't really say if this was the end of the run, so not sure how many Omnis will be printed of this. So you have the embossed logo on the front and on the side. A little bit of crack in here. So your cover page. You got your, uh, your credits here, table of contents, and then you jump into it. And yo, definitely loving the artwork here. And I know New Teen Titans is where you get Nightwing, where we get Deathstroke and all that stuff. So I definitely, um, I definitely am interested in reading this through, man. Got to find some more time because the channel has got me busy. And I've been reading um, the weekly issues pretty good. But it seems like I get burnt out after reading those every Tuesday. Seen a lot of Cyborg stuff, Nightwing going on. Starfire, Beast Boy. Look at that. Dang. I was flipping through it earlier when I was uh, relaxing the spine here, so it definitely looks good, man. Let's see what's in the back, if anything. It seems like this is just part of uh, an annual or something that gives you all these biographies. All right, guys, these next two books 
uh, were whales. These are reprints of out-of-print Marvel Omnibus. So we're going to start with the new Warriors. This is the DM variant, which is the Scotty Young cover. This comes out March 3rd. Collects new Warriors from the 90s. Issues 1 through 26. Annuals 1 through 2. Avengers 341 and 342. Uh, and material from Thor 411 and 412. New Mutants Annual 7, X-Men Annual 15, X-Factor Annual 6, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 26, Spectacular Spider-Man Annual 12, and Web of Spider-Man Annual 8. It has a $125 cover price. We're going to take a look at the binding right now, and I'm going to compare it to the first printing. All right, so taking off the dust jacket here, beautiful wraparound cover here, man. You got to love that stuff. Some Night Thrasher action, some Nova action. Uh, let's take a look at the binding. It has a very cool red and black kind of bumblebee ribbon. It doesn't really lift up as much, but it does still lay down pretty flat. So the Marvel Omnibus usually have pretty good uh, binding when it comes to these Omnibus. The page quality is a little bit thinner, which doesn't make it as stiff. So you can see even towards the end here, you're still kind of laying flat. So all in all, pretty good binding let's do some overhead shots and again compare it to the first printing so here's the first print on the left and you have the new printing on the right now check this out they changed the spine they definitely gave you more of the artistic logo look the little image on the bottom so that is a, a big difference right now let's look at the back the back looks identical except for the price tag it did increase 25 bucks but you know inflation the inside of the dust jackets are the same as you can see but another big change is that wraparound cover man wow so this is the first printing all black second printing has a wraparound cover but it also has the spine there so that's pretty interesting all right but let's flip through here so bright yellow interior pages, nice cover page. I believe that's Mark Bagley. I know he had a lot to do with this run. Here's your table of contents. And then you jump into New Warriors issue one, Heroes for the 90s, some Night Thrasher action going on here. Love the era, I love the artwork. I was never a big New Warriors fan. I mean, as a kid during this time, if it wasn't Spider-Man or X-Men, I didn't know nothing about it. Except for what I saw on the trading cards. So I always knew of Speedball and Night Thrasher. You know, Joe Jusco did the Night Thrasher card in the 92 set. Looks like Punisher 2099 almost. But I guess that's Punisher feature. It looks promising though, man. I, you know, I love the era and I love the artwork. Look, some X-Men, X-Force, New Mutant stuff. Wolverine here. US Agent, is that? You got Galactus in here. Jeez. There must have been some uh, storyline that tied in with all the different annuals that I read off. That's usually how they did events back in the 90s. Spider-Man stuff here. It looks really good, guys. I got to read this. I got to buckle down and knock this out, man. So in the back, swimsuit stuff. Oh, look, like I mentioned the trading cards. And uh, check out my video on the Marvel trading cards that are exploding in the marketplace right now. Here's Series 2, Series 3. That's it. I guess they weren't in Series 1. They, ha they hadn't come out yet because that was 1990. You got uh, Fabian Decizia in the back here. Some sketch work, some variants, trade paperback covers and such. Awesome, guys. That looks great. All right, and the last book of the haul, another reprint, X-Men Volume 2, long sold out, out of print whale that's been reprinted for you guys. Now, what's interesting here is that this cover, the regular cover, comes out March 3rd, but the direct market variant is scheduled to be released on February 24th, so you might want to be on the lookout for that if you're looking to get those. Now, this omnibus is a classic must-have. This is where Jim Lee and Chris Claremont's run uh, starts their own volume with the classic adjectiveless X-Men. So you get first X-Factor 63 through 70, Uncanny X-Men 273 and 280, then X-Men 1 through 9, which is the fold-out, gatefold cover, the, the million copies sold or whatever it was. Uh, and you also get material from uh, issues 10 and 11 and Ghost Rider 26 through 27. We'll do the same thing like we did with New Warriors and we'll compare this to the first printing. This one has your traditional old school all black hardcover. And let's take a look at the binding on this guy. 
Look what I opened up right to uh, those classic issues that I was mentioning. I actually did a, a review on this one a few months ago, and I really, really enjoyed it where I didn't really love Volume 1, and I took a lot of heat for that, but hey, didn't like it. So um, same kind of deal. It's not like you, ha you have a big eye with the ribbon. It doesn't really lift up that much, but the type of page stock allows you to have a nice smooth read without gutter loss. So looking very good here. Now you get some gutter loss if you get something like this. So these posters. So let's go ahead and do those overhead shots. All right, guys, X-Men, Volume 2, Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, Wills Portacio, first printing on the left, new printing on the right. Looks identical so far. Looking at the spines, you can see that the new printing looks a little bit thinner. Page stock, paper quality, a little bit different. Well, I should say just thinner. I don't want to say it's not as good quality, but it's thinner, right? Uh, the back looks identical. Same cover price, $1.25. Collects the same issues, same thumbnails on the back. Let's look at the uh, hardcover. The first printing is the original Generation 1 type omnibus, right? With the black and silver, that faux leather look. Whereas the new one has that matte black with kind of, you know, a little bit of color and uh, white logos there. So that looks to be really the only difference on these two books. All right, let's flip through this. Black interior pages. You got your little cover page here, Jim Lee action. Here's some credits, table of contents. Previously on X-Men. <laughs> so you're jumping into X-Factor. This was super weird, right? This whole, I don't know, out and about on the town thing, if I recall. All right, so then uh, this basically, like I said, all leads into their own new series, kind of like the end of an era with their Uncanny run, although Uncanny continued to run simultaneously. <clears throat> but basically the X-Men team coming back together after being thought they were dead, after having the Australian team in the Outback, everyone was scattered about. <clears throat> and then uh, everybody comes back together to form the X-Men once again. Let's see if we can get there. But obviously, artwork is amazing. 90s Jim Lee is like unmatched. And I think he was really in his, I think he was, he really found his stride here when he started doing these runs. Yeah, so here's the uh, X-Men number one. So it had all these different covers, covers A, B, C, and D, and I think even E. And then you had the, the one that folded outwards like this. And then it had the pinups in the back, a blast from the past. The Wish You Were Here, A Taste of Things to Come, which teased Omega Red. So yeah, you get like the first nine issues, then you get some of issues 10 and 11, Jim Lee Psylocke, come on man. Definitely a must own book. Volume one's reprint already uh, came out, I believe, right guys? And you get your bonus stuff in the back. Pencils and sketch work, Jim Lee stuff. Come on, man. I think they have trading card stuff in the back here, too, right? X-Men poster by Jim Lee, the swimsuit stuff, second printings, Savage Land Rogue. Here's some more trading card series two and three. Oh, the Jim Lee X-Men set. I have I don't own this one, man. And now it's like with the market, I'm sure it's expensive as hell. Awesome, man. All these cards in the back. And then it actually uh, it has a fold out, right? Yeah, that's right. So you get the fold out in the original coloring. Right? And then on the back, you get the modernized covering. So cool, man. You got another poster on the back. So this was what was on the back of that um, poster. And look, the same thing. They have modernized coloring on one side and the original coloring on the other side. Very cool of them to include this. And this was also in the first printing. All right, guys. So I know a lot of times you guys go to cheap graphic novels or other online stores, and these are all sold out. 
I have another option for you guys. One of my good friends has started their own online shop called organicpricedbooks.com. Comparable prices, and I know the guy. He's ordering hundreds of these books to have them in stock. So, hey, you can go check him out, uh, see if it's worth it for you guys. Maybe it's sold out somewhere else, or maybe you just want to try somewhere new. So give him a holler. Let me know what you think about the haul in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of these videos. We're going to announce a 125,000 subscriber giveaway real soon. I just got to really think of what I want to do. It's got to be pretty big, right? 125 is a big milestone. If you guys like to support the channel in other ways, we have a membership program where you can click the join button right next to the subscribe button. There's three different tiers which each grant you a gem next to your name anytime you comment on a video or a live stream. You get early access to all videos and you also get placed into monthly gem crate drawings. I've also been doing stuff like members only live chats. Pick up some gem mint merch at our Teespring account. The link's in the description. We have t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, face masks, all different types of designs. A lot of homage logos like Bone Thugs, Death Row, TMNT, Cash Money, stuff like that. And lastly, our partners at Street Level Hero are having their week-long sale. Buy three variants, get three free for any of their 2020 exclusives. So go swing on there if you want to pick up some cool covers and to support the channel. And if you pick up any of their 2021 exclusives, use the code GEMMIN to save 10%. And that code is good for life anytime you shop. I appreciate you guys watching. Check out my other omnibus hauls and overviews in the playlist to the right. And stay minty fresh. Peace.